of uh, our rule, Mr. Lombardo? Um, let's not kid ourselves. The reason you're having this discussion is because you try to shut me down just about every time I've been up here. I do not remember a time where I haven't been criticized, uh, called names. And so your pedantic rules on decorum are one-way rules, and that's why I have a problem with them. They're pedantic, and they're made to protect certain members of the council. You don't like what I have to say. I'm glad you're having the discussion, but you didn't need to do this. You could have just asked Councilman Selico what the rules are, the Constitution. This is not rocket science. This is stuff that you should learn in high school. The government can place time and place restrictions on free speech. That's it. What you're doing is play, placing content-based restrictions. Now, I was told last time we was in here that I could, that you could stop me from talking about people that weren't here or using people's names that weren't here. That's just, I think, I think you should have it by now. You can't do that. That's a violation of the First Amendment. I don't care how long you've been doing it. You're not going to get away with it one more time. The, the complaints on my word processor and it's ready to go. You can't do it. And I'm, 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 I'm happy to hear that some of the counselors seem to get it. What I don't get is after you do get all this material, some of you still don't get it because you don't want to get it. Now, when I was in here last time, I threw this case around North versus City of Santa Cruz. I said it's the lead case. And I also cited from uh, White v. City of Norwalk. And I was told, oh, we don't have that, and we got a better case. Well, we're going to go through the memorandums that you paid money for. Any first-year law student could have produced this. But let's see what it does say, since you paid for it. Page 4, White versus City of Norwalk. This is the, if you want to follow along, this is the summary memorandum to Tom Capalbo from National Legal Research Group. I don't know how much you paid for this, but I would have just said, why don't we just uh, defer to Councilman Selico? But uh, there we go. They discuss White versus City of Norwalk over and over again. Norse versus City of Santa Cruz. Speech cannot be prohibited or punished, however, simply because it might offend a member of the council. Sorry, sorry, if you can't handle it, get out of here. You think that's rude. I think it's disrespectful to stop somebody from speaking their mind. That's disrespectful. And to use the word slander, when I know none of you that use it know what it is. You wouldn't know how to, what the elements of slander are. You have no idea what it means. And I've asked everybody who's accused me of slander to tell me what I've said that's not true. And I've gotten no responses. I was told here that you could limit, you still seem to think that you can l limit slander. You would, how are you going to decide if it's slander? It's going to take a court to decide if it's slander. Speech cannot be, uh, be chilled. That means you have to wait till it's determined to be slander before you can call it slander. And you're not in a position in anybody on this council to determine whether it's slander. The court, all right, and so we got this white. Um, you can, court struck down a provision prohibiting the use of, of, of abusive language. You cannot, you cannot even stop me from saying something that's abusive, but you still think you can. It's too bad. The only restriction is if I'm disruptive, and disruptive means really disruptive, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But I'm just reading from the material you were given, and so I'm asking you to read it yourself. You paid a lot of money for it. Only, res only restrictions. They have to be re reasonable, content neutral, both to subject matter and viewpoint, aimed at serving a significant governmental interest not decorum, narrowly tailored to effectuate that interest and crafted in a way that leaves open alternate, ample alternate channels of communication. In summary, read the summary. These would re include requiring a person to sign up in advance, not to speak anonymously, provide their addresses, to close in disclose in advance the topic they wish to address, present, 
President Turn, address only issues on the agenda, given all these restrictions. The last paragraph, the difficult issue is the restriction of speech in the interest of maintaining civility. What is clear is that such restrictions cannot be either content or viewpoint based. Council will be permitted to stop such speech only if it is actually disruptive or if members reasonably anticipate it will imminently become disruptive. That's it. That is not, that's the law of the land. It's disruptive. And I do not believe that I've ever been disruptive. What I've been is said things that made certain counselors uncomfortable. But the reason we have the problems we have in this town, and if you think you're gonna stop the train, the train's left the station. You have three choices. You can run and catch up to the train and jump on it. You can stay at the station and let other people ride the train. Or you can try to jump in front of the train, which is suicide. Now this case here, I don't know why this Carlo versus Merck, that's in your materials, that says you can basically prevent people who are non-citizens from speaking. That's all it says. That's fine. No problem with any of that. You can limit the speech any way you want, but you can't do it based on, because it's discourteous to some members. Then the final document you have. Um, this is 10 First Amendment Law Review article titled Civility in Government Meetings. And again, they talk about the case, uh, Santa Cruz case, because it is the lead case. But most of this is, is garbage. It's not relevant, but some of it is. Whether applying a strict scrutiny or a lowered standard of review, courts have held that no public criticism, criticism of employees' rules are unconstitutional. Let me read that again. Quote, they put it in quotes, no public criticism of employees' rules are unconstitutional. Okay, sorry. Therefore, the public, state, the public statements cannot, as a matter of law, give rise to an insulted employee's claim for defamation or de, uh, uh, de deprivation of due process. And that, that answers your question from last week. If, if you cannot be sued because you let somebody speak here, okay? Again, if you just called up Mr. Selico, he could have avoided all this because he, he's absolutely right. He was right last week and he's still right with the material you've given them. So, again, go to the last paragraph of this. It's all you need to know. Civility in public debate is somewhat of an oxymoron. Some of you will have to look that up, what that word means. It is expected that public debate will be uninhibited, robust, wide open, vehement, caustic, and sharp. Such speech is not only protected, it is encouraged. The First Amendment embodies the right of Americans to express their views in political discourse, even if not always in good taste or according to dictates of civility. That's your material provided by your solicitor, and I think that if you read that over and over again, that's the only thing you need to know. And I find it disrespectful when I get up here to speak, when it's open mic, open talk about anything, and I'm told I can't talk about that person because he's not in the room or she's not in the room. That's an absolute violation of the First Amendment, especially when that person's asking for the town to give, give him money and he doesn't show up, but we can't talk about him. You're using your rules of decorum to squelch speech you don't like. And if you think you're fooling anybody, you're not. Everybody sees through it. Everybody knows there's problems in this town. You had a rough two weeks in the newspaper for those people who are trying to suppress uh, free speech, and it's going to get worse. I will guarantee it. 
you're going to either have to change or you're going to, you're going to be forced to change. So I'm asking that the next time you get up here, I do not want to be told, open mic, that I can't talk about somebody or there's certain things that I can't touch. And I think, uh, and I'm hoping, that if you want to waste taxpayers' dollars on lawsuits, that you have the decency to reimburse the town if you lose. Because you use that section there as a slush fund. And I don't like it, and I'm going to expose it. Thank you.